From Hollywood, the Sweeney and March program. I'm Bob Sweeney. I talk to horses. I'm Hal March. I owe Silver! Bob, please! Columbia Broadcasting System and its affiliated stations present the Sweeney and March program, starring the young comedy stylist Bob Sweeney and Hal March, with the music of Lud Gleskin and his orchestra, and featuring the songs of the Sweeney and March Choral Society. I'm Bob Lamont. <laughs> and now... And now for more homey adventure of those homey adventurers, Bob Sweeney and Hal March, the happy Rover Boys. Yes, Bob Sweeney and Hal March, the clever radio comedians of whom a gentleman celebrating his 125th birthday once said, I'm an old man. And so, as we find the boys today... <laughs> as, <laughs> as we find the boys today, they're driving to the studios of CBS in Hollywood. Uh, Hal is behind the wheel. In case the folks didn't hear it, I'm behind the wheel. <laughs> oh, Bob, we're almost to CBS. Check all the stuff you want to take in with you. Okay, let's see. Gloves, sweater, galoshes, raincoat, hat, and umbrella. Uh, see, Hal, do you think it might rain today? No, not a chance. Weather's perfect. Good, then I'll leave my sweater in the car. <laughs> I suppose if it were snowing, you'd take your necktie and leave your long underwear. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be silly. I, I'm already wearing my long underwear. Uh, why on earth wear long underwear this time of year? Keeps my shorts warm. <laughs> I'm sorry I brought it up, Bob. Anyway, we've got something a lot more important to think about. We have to get a show together for next week, and I've got a wonderful idea for one. What do you think I did? I ordered a book that'll make a great show for us. When you ask me a question, why don't you stop and let me answer it? Uh, what do you think I did? What? Oh, this is awfully confusing. <laughs> Where'd you buy the book, Hal? At a bookstore, at oh. a bookstore. They're going to deliver it to the office. We're going to do a show about the story of Bo Brummel. Oh, boy, that sounds swell, Hal. He's my favorite actor. Bo Brummel is your favorite actor? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I thought you said Edward G. Robinson. <laughs> Edward G. Robinson. Well, here's the CBS parking lot. I'll pull in and let Charlie, the attendant, park the car. Yeah, let's get up to the office, Bob, and start work on Bo Brummel. Okay, Hal. Oops. Oops. Forgot my lunch pail. <laughs> Oops. Just a second. Forgot my lunch. <laughs> Bob, why don't you carry your lunch inside your lunch pail? Well, the, the lock's been broken for two months, and I can't get it open. Well, why do you carry a lunch pail that's been locked for two months? Oh, I want to get it open someday because there's a banana in there. <laughs> A banana? Yeah. How nice. Why don't you come over to my house someday? We'll play Ring Around the Maniac. <laughs> That's a funny one. Charlie! Uh, let me call Charlie, because uh, uh, I want to tell him to park the car. It gives me a feeling of importance to give orders. Oh, okay, go ahead, tyrant. Hey, Charlie! Uh, park the car! Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Sweeney, right away, sir. Hey, mind you, don't bend the fenders or, or I'll have your head. Oh, no, sir, Mr. Sweeney, I'll be careful, sir. Don't you worry. Uh, well, 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 see that you are careful. Come on, Bob. Thanks, Charlie. Oh, glad to do it, Mr. March, Mr. Sweeney. Glad to do it. Huh. Insolent young pup. <laughs> yes, sir, Bob, Bo Brummel is going to be a great story for us. Hey, how, who is this Bo Brummel guy? What, what did he do? Uh, ah, Bo, Bo Brummel. Brummel was a well-dressed, dashing, debonair, witty, handsome lady killer. A lot like a fellow I see every morning in the mirror. <laughs> Who's that, Hal? Me, Bob, me. What do you think is in the mirror? A little man with a funny face? Well, there is one I look in. <laughs> oh, come on, let's get into the lobby. Well, there's a lot of people yeah, here today. Hey, Hal. Huh? Hal, there's our orchestra leader, Lud Gluskin. Oh. Boy, uh, uh, you better tell him about the Bo Brummel show if you want some good music. No, no, Bob. No, we're not going to use Gluskin for that program. He dresses so shabbily that he wouldn't fit in our Bo Brummel show. Well, he'd buy better clothes if you'd ask him. No, he wouldn't, Bob, because he's a miser. I see? His whole family's that way, too. He had an uncle who died in a cheap hotel room... And they found 50 million silver dollars in his mattress. 50 million silver dollars in his mattress? Mm -hmm. How did he die? He was crushed against the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, 
all that money and he died flat, huh? <laughs> Be nice to him, Bob. They'll always cater to the wealthy. Yeah, butter it up. Yeah, yeah. Hello, Lud. Oh, you Lud, you handsome man, you. <laughs> oh, I like that muffler you're wearing. I don't lend money to nobody. <laughs> Hiya, Mr. Gluskin. I, I certainly did enjoy your, your superb music last week. I don't lend money to nobody. Forget it, Lud. Come on, Bob. Let's get over to the... What, what are you doing down there? I, I found a dollar bill on the floor, Hal. A dollar bill. A dollar bill? Mm-hmm. A dollar bill? <laughs> yeah, Gluskin. The kid found it. What's the serial number? <laughs> Q-335-7196-4820-D. Nope. That isn't one of mine. <laughs> If you don't mind, Gluskin. Oh, I don't lend money to nobody. <laughs> well, Bob, let's get into the elevator and up to our office and start writing up the Bo Brummel show. Oh, how this this Bo Brummel show is all right for you, but but, but what about me? Well, who am I in it? Bob, Bo Brummel had a lot of friends, dashing fellows, just like himself. Oh boy, I'll be one of those guys, huh? Mm, no, buddy. He was constantly being chased by jealous husbands. Oh, boy. I'll be one of those jealous husband guys, huh? Mm, no. Now, Bo Brummel had a slave. Yes, master. Good. <laughs> Shall we go up? While Bob and Hal try to siphon gasoline from their cigarette lighters to their car, the Coral Group offers red silk stockings and green perfume. A new type number. <laughs> With a red silk stockings and a green perfume Blew into this town with a silver blue Never was any trouble, but she started some soon With a red silk stockings and a green perfume Oh, the town was a growing and the money was a flowing And the boys were throwing it around for the red silk stockings and the green perfume. She arrived on the stagecoach at the minor saloon. What they thought was an angel was a witch on a broom. They'd be in the jailhouse, but they ain't enough room. For the red silk stockings and the green perfume. The silvery moon. He was meeting that stranger by the cactus dune. Now she left for the memory of a honky tonk tune. Here's a gal knows her way around. Took the town, turned it upside down with a red silk stockings and a green perfume. the Radio Rover Boys. For the benefit of those of you who tuned in late, we'll do absolutely nothing about it because it'll bore those who tuned in early. As we find the boys now, they're on their way to their office to look for the copy of Bo Brummel they've ordered from the bookstore. Ah, boy, I can hardly wait to do the show about Bo Brummel, Bob. It's so right for me. Yeah, boy, you'll be great, Hal. Yeah. Hal March Brummel. Hal March Bo. Hal Bo Brummel March. <laughs> March Bo Hal Brummel. <laughs> Brummel Mo Harchbell. <laughs> Mummel Brummel Holbell. <laughs> oh, it sounds so natural. Yeah, Hal, huh? uh, remember that part about Mummel Brummel Harchbell? Yeah. I heard that somewhere before. <laughs> Forget it. Let's get into our office. Okay, I'll open the door, Hal. Good, I'm anxious to see that book. Yeah, let's, let's get it open. Now, the book's no doubt here from the bookstore already, and our secretary, Miss Webster, probably hasn't... By the way, where is Miss Webster? wonder where she can be. Oh, wait a minute. I'll, I'll find her. I'll use mental telepathy. Mental telepathy? Picked it up at summer camp last year. Oh. Now, now, concentrate. Eyes closed. Concentrate. A voice within me says, look on the desk and you'll find a note. Bob, there is a note. How could you tell? I was peeking. <laughs> oh, Let's see that note. 
Well, the letter is from Miss Webster, Bob. Well, what does the dear old lady have to say, huh? Let's see. She says, uh, Dear boys, my association with you has been one of the happiest of my life, but unfortunately, I won't be around the office anymore to hear your little jokes. But I'll remember every one of them and cry. <laughs> I am marrying Malfany McQuiver. You may think Malfany is impetuous, but I am confident we know each other, although we have been engaged only 47 years. (laughs) Well, this is goodbye, boys, and always remember, though there be dark clouds upon the hills, there soon will be crowds of daffodils. So just keep looking for a bloomer and listening for his song. Whenever April shower come along. Signed, Miss Webster. I didn't know she could sing. Well, Bob, she's gone. Well, it's your old lady. Sweet old lady's gone. Maybe we'll never see her again. (laughs) Our next secretary will probably be young and sexy. Yeah, she'll... Yeah. (laughs) Poor Miss Webster. Yeah. (laughs) Let's call up personnel and get the new secretary. I'll dial Hal. Good, go ahead. Let's see, their number is 128. That's right. 128. Uh, All right. Nine and an O. That makes nine and O is ninety. <laughs> now three. You'll have to wait a minute. <laughs> and eight. That makes thirty-eight. Ninety and thirty-eight is one hundred and twenty-eight. Yeah. Uh, hello, personnel. It isn't. Oh, I'm sorry. Must have added wrong. <laughs> Never mind, Bob. Give me the phone. I'll call. Added wrong. Added wrong. I said that. Yeah. <laughs> it's a double ad lib. Yes, <laughs> now, office. Hello. I'd like to speak to the manager, please. Yes, the man. <laughs> well, do you know when I can get in touch with him? Yes, the man. <laughs> I know that, but I'd like to leave a message. This is Hal March. Oh. Well, what's your name? <laughs> Hal March. He is the man. Hello, Hal. What do you want? I just want to stay in the scene. <laughs> Look, uh, miss, my partner and I are doing a show on Bo Brummel. Our secretary has left us. We need a new one. Now, would you please deliver that message to the manager? We want to start writing our script on Bo Brummel. Who? Bo Brummel. He is the man. Forget it. Oh, that girl drives me insane. If I had to be around her all day... Is this the package you were looking for from the bookstore? Uh, This one? Oh, Oh, let me open it and see. Yeah, look at this one. This might be it. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Uh, Here's a book that'll make a real radio show. Let me see it, huh, boy? This looks interesting, boy. Go ahead, be good for you. Yeah. Mmm. Boy, oh, boy. Boy, this Bo Brummel guy was sure sociable, huh? <laughs> Must have given a lot of parties. Had a lot of company, huh? What do you mean, company? Well, right here on, on the first page, it says, I am Bo's guest. Bo's guest? What are you talking about? Let me see that book. That's Bo's jest, not Bo's... Bo's jest. Well, what's the matter, Hal? I asked for Bo Brummel, and they sent me Bo jest. Now, what happened to Bo Brummel? <laughs> Doggone it! Someone just told Bob and Hal to go fly a kite, so that's where they are at the moment. In the meantime, the choral group sings Peg of My Heart. Your glance is making me say, house chances come. 
home be my home, make your home be my home. Every beautiful rose, every violet nose, I love her, I do, that's the way it goes. Tell me it's too low, I'm aiming high. Tell me it's you, can a dreamer try? Beg of my heart, I love you, never to part. I love you, I knew that it'd be you. Heard your laughter, at your heart that I'm after. Maybe your glances making me say, how's chances be my own? Make your home in my heart. the story of Monty and Gilbert. If you recall, the boys were on their way down to the lumber yard to pick up a bundle of shingles for Grandma Peterson. She's had them for three years, but she refuses to see a doctor. <laughs> and now, here are Monty and Gilbert. Hal. What is it, Bob? Uh, what is the story of Bo just about? Oh, it's all about guys in the French Foreign Legion who ran away from a woman or some debts, and they're out in the desert riding camels, drinking Arabs, and chasing cokes up and down sand dunes. <laughs> Stuff like that. Uh, what else? Oh, a lot of stuff. No, no, really, Hal. Tell me about it. Well, once upon a time, there was a guy named Beau Geste, And he was the guy... <laughs> I'm Beaugest, a soldier of fortune, a legionnaire in the French Forum. This, this is my story. The story of a hard life fighting fierce Arab tribes on the burning sands of the Sahara Desert. Fierce Arabs mounted on the traditional steed, the camel, the ship of the desert. Yes, an Arab is lost without his camel and might well say, I'd walk a mile for a puff and my water pipe. <laughs> I'm Beau Jest, and my story may remind older folks of the tale of Tom Thumb. Tom Thumb, whose wife kept him under her big toe. <laughs> I, too, was driven to the French Foreign Legion by a woman. As I looked into her smiling eyes, I thought, what a funny place to have tea. <laughs> then she said, oh, I love you, Francois Villon. I am Beau Jest. <laughs> See, Francois Villon had been seeing her every morning. He was the ice, monsieur. <laughs> the foreign legion, and that was all that was left for me. And so it was that I joined the Andy Hardy Battalion of the French Foreign Legion. <laughs> the Andy Hardy Battalion was made up of disgraced bartenders who had served too many Mickeys. <laughs> These men of the legion were desperate men but not as desperate as the two officers who made our lives almost unbearable. These men were Hinky Dinky March and Parlez-vous Sweeney. <laughs> Frenchmen, Frenchmen they were, yes. And their battle cry was, Ready for Freddy! <laughs> yes. There was tough, two-fisted, cruel, sadistic Sergeant March who said... Why, Sweeney and I rode alone into the thick of a fierce desert battle with Arabs in front of us, Arabs in back of us, Arabs to the right of us, and Arabs to the left of us. And there was his equally ruthless and sadistic companion, Corporal Sweeney, who said... We got killed. <laughs> Ah, 
I am Bogest. And as my story opens, my library card falls out. <laughs> I remember the first time I ever saw these cruel and human beasts. They were riding on a camel named Julius Fingnapple. <laughs> At the head of their camel corps, they rode into a little white desert fort to which I had been assigned. Camel corps! Halt! Camel corps! Dismount! All right, Sweeney, give the men their orders. Now listen, you men, get your camels cleaned up right away. At the two o'clock, we're going to have hump inspection. <laughs> Dismissed. All right, Winnie. You better check our equipment because this afternoon we have to go out on a patrol again. If it's the last thing we ever do, we're going to capture Sheik Ali Cat. <laughs> Let's get those guns cleaned up. Well, I already cleaned the guns, Sergeant. Good. What'd you clean them with? My new soap powder. I call it, uh, don't. You call your new soap powder don't? Yep. Don't doesn't do anything. <laughs> well, that's a real soap powder, Sweeney. That's a real soap powder. Yeah, Sweeney. Yes, sir. How did you happen to join the French Foreign Legion? Oh, I don't know. Was it a woman? Yeah, it was a woman. Didn't she love you? Yeah, crazy about me. Didn't her father like you? Yeah, like me fine. Did you have any money? Yeah, plenty of money. Did you have a good job? Yeah, a swell job. Well, and you happen to join the French Foreign Legion? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> it was then that I, Bogest, introduced myself. I looked Sergeant March squarely in the eye and said, I am Bogest. Bogest? What's the story, Gest? Yeah, Bo, what's your story? But before I could answer, Corporal Sweeney whipped out his revolver and fired three shots into the wall. Then he turned on me with blazing eyes and snarled. I got a gun. <laughs> well, Sweeney, <laughs> the men ought to be rested enough by now. We've got a job to do. We have to capture Sheik Ali. But this mission is going to be very dangerous. So we better get a volunteer to go with us. Tell the bugler to sound assembly. <laughs> Bugler, sound assembly. Si, senor. Men, men, Garkins. Now, Garkins, Corporal Sweeney and I want to volunteer to go with us over to the oasis in search of Sheik Alicat. It's too dangerous a trip for us to make alone. I don't make a loan to nobody. <laughs> Who said that, Sweeney? That was Pierre Gluskin, our Foreign Legion bugler. Oh, a musician, eh? Where'd we get him? Oh, he's well-known in Paris. He was? Yeah, he used to play second adhesive tape in a big band aid. <laughs> All right, now. Which one of you men would like to volunteer for this expedition? <laughs> what was that, Bogest? What'd you say? Well, I didn't say anything. I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I'll hold my breath. I'll eat paper. Now, you guys leave me alone. Good boy, Bojess. Good boy. Just the man for the job. A real coward. <laughs> Sweeney, we march to capture Shigali. Sound the battle cry. Yes, sir. Off go Sandy! <laughs> I am Bogest, and this is my story. It was night when Sergeant March, Corporal Sweeney, and I silently stole out of the fort and over to the oasis where Sheik Ali and his men had pitched their tents. They had pitched them in a big pile and were having difficulty untangling them. <laughs> Suddenly, we stopped. Before us stood a powerfully built Arab guard, rifle in hand. The keen-eyed Arab, mind alert, spotted us and cried out, One, two, three for you guys. <laughs> All right, Sweeney. Oh, yes. I think this is Sheik Ali's tent. Follow me. Quiet now. Here, let me open the flap on this tent. Somebody ought to oil that guy's tent flap. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that beautiful dancing girl, Sweeney. What do you think of that, Sweeney, huh? Oh, she'd make a nice lampshade. 
You, uh, you like my dance, Fendi. Yeah, and I think you're very attractive, too. Has anyone ever told you that your eyes are like two limpid pools? Why, no. Uh, well, if anybody does, you can forget about being a dancer. We'll use you as a watering trough for the camel. <laughs> oh, it is not safe here. You must go quickly or she galley will find you. Please, it is not safe. Yeah, yeah, I guess we better go. You know, safety is the best policy. Oh, I wouldn't say that. You, <laughs> you wouldn't say that safety is the best policy? No. After Paul the Life puts out a pretty good policy, too. Oh, here comes Ali now. All right, Sweeney, on your guard and cover him with your gun when he comes in. Presenting Sheik Ali Cat. Prince of the East, King of the West, High Mogul of the Shish Kebab, and past commander of Dicky Bird Post 324. Hiya, fellas, what's cooking? <laughs> Smells good. All right, Sweeney, get your gun on him. Okay, Sheik, over there, over there, over there, get the tent, get the arms up high, high. There now. Now, what do you got to say for yourself? I guess the old Foreign Legion did it again, huh? Oh, no. Don't tell me you guys are doing bull jest again. Every year it's your movie guys or your radio guys. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're doing, yeah. Oh, no. Hey, fellas, get these clowns here. They're doing bull jest again, huh? Bull jest, huh? Oh, no. (laughs) Well, you can mock all you want, Sheik, but this is the end. Okay, okay, so it's the end. So what are you going to do now? Eh? I said, what are you going to do now? Well, what are we going to do now? What are we going to do now, Sweeney? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. How'd the book end? <laughs> How'd the book end? Is that what's bothering you? Well, in the book, everybody goes over and sets the fort on fire. Is that what you want to do? Go over and set the fort on fire, huh? Is that what you want to do, huh? Is it? Is it? Come on, speak up, speak up. I'm a busy man. I got some real wells to take care of. <laughs> Well, if that's the way everybody else... Yeah, come on, Hal. Let's set the, let's set the fort on fire, huh? Okay. All right, I'll get my box of Armenian marshmallows. I'll be right with you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there's no sense in listening any further. We go over and we burn down the fort. I check me Earl Wells and these clowns go back to CVS. Good night. Next Saturday at a new time, Columbia and the Civilian Stations will present another Sweeney and March program with Led Luskin's orchestra and the Sweeney and March choral group. And now credit where credit is due. And our cast tonight were Doris Singleton, Hans Conried, High Aberback, Gil Stratton, Jack Crutcher, Bud Whittem, and I'm Bob Lamont. Here now are Bob and Hal. Good night, everyone. Everybody. Next Saturday, Sweeney and March will be heard two hours earlier. That's 8.30 Eastern Daylight Savings Time over most of these stations. This is CBS, the Columbia.